Hi again in our second series of COVID-19 Vaccine Explainer with Dr. Ivan again. Hi, Dr. Ivan. Hey. So um, I have like a question that is related to a lot of, I mean, is being asked by so many people, like especially those who are not within the high risk groups. So they're saying that I'm not in a high risk group, so why should I take the vaccine? And at the same time, I don't mix with those people in a high risk group. So am I eligible to take the COVID-19 uh, the COVID vaccine? So that's a very good question. And it's a good opportunity to talk again about the scheme that WHO has proposed for the prioritization of this vaccine. We have proposed that we have a prioritization for people who are healthcare workers and those with risk factors. Why healthcare workers? Well, if you work on a construction site, your employer is gonna give you a helmet before you go to the construction site. In the same kind of way, if you're healthcare workers, you should be protected against COVID before going uh, taking care of the patient. That's the first priority group. Then afterwards, we have all the elderly and the people with risk factors, because if they get COVID, they're more likely to die. So these two groups are the first 20% we want to reach first with the vaccination program. Once these are vaccinated, we can go broader in the adult population. And if you're lucky enough that you're being offered the vaccine and you're an adult, aside from this risk group, you should also take it because that also contributes to reducing the circulation of the virus. Um, another thing, Dr. Ivan, so if I had already had COVID-19, so it means that I have now natural immunity. So why I would risk myself by getting the vaccine and there are so many risks related to it? So that's a great question, Munira. And like everyone, you know, for instance, if you got measles, you don't need the measles vaccine, you have natural immunity. For COVID, we're dealing with a virus that's a bit more tricky. And there is an immunity, we think it lasts about six months, but it's not enough. So once you've had the infection, you wait six months and then you get the vaccine, that means that on the natural immunity, you add more immunity, vaccine-induced, better immunity, that will protect you longer, protect you better, protect you, protect the people around you. Um, there are many people who are suffering heart problems and they, have, they might have a history of blood clotting. And they, they think that they should not take the COVID vaccines because this vaccine is gonna cause them either this heart problems or um, this blood clottings. And they think also even WTO, they, it has already admitted the, that some vaccines as the AstraZeneca vaccine, it cause kind of deadly blood clottings. So what do you comment on this? So it's true that the AstraZeneca vaccine has been associated with very rare events, a few per million of blood clots that can be problematic. And I can understand that those with uh, uh, history, for instance, or family history of uh, thrombosis or clots are concerned about taking the vaccine. So what we should tell these people is that the risk of getting the clot after the vaccine is much lower than the risk of getting COVID and complications from COVID. All the vaccines works against COVID. So any vaccine approved by the national authority of your country will be good to protect you, to protect your family, to protect those around you. So um, my doctor has advised me to, to take a baby's aspirin after getting the, the AstraZeneca specifically vaccine. And this is to prevent any blood clotting. So is this, is this uh, correct? So I understand where you're getting at. The baby aspirin actually has this uh, activity against blood clots and we actually use it as a prevention of people with heart disease to make sure they don't have clots. So I can understand where you're getting at. If it works to prevent blood clots, maybe if I take it along with the vaccine, I'm not gonna get the blood clot. I can see that what we call the, the rationale and the, the ID behind it. In WHO though, we work with fact, we work with evidence, we work with things that we measure and that we've seen. So while we understand the ID behind this whole concept, before we've proven that aspirin would be effective at reducing the risk of blood clot, we will tell you that it's better not to do it. And actually a number of countries like the UK has advised against it. The clots after the AstraZeneca vaccine, they're very uncommon, they're very specific, 
um, in their mechanism. And it's not absolutely clear that aspirin would do anything against that. So because it does no proven benefit, it's better to abstain because aspirin also has side effects. So, Dr. Ivan, there are a lot of rumors circulating about these vaccines. One of the rumors that is being circulated in our region, so that the COVID-19 vaccines are causing infertility among men and women. So what is, what is the scientific fact behind this? There is absolutely no science behind it. And that's actually... Uh, unfortunately, something that we've seen with many vaccines, we have people who spread rumors about vaccine and infertility. The only thing that we can say is that we have absolutely no science uh, in favor of this, that we, of course, monitor the effect of each vaccine in the side of effectiveness, on the side of safety. And if such a thing was to happen, we would have mechanism to detect it and to address it. So unfortunately, Infertility after COVID vaccine, after other vaccine, is really a legend or a myth. And we have absolutely no science that suggests to us that there's any truth behind it. So this leads to another important question. So if someone managed to, to be like, protected from COVID-19 for almost a year, like using these uh, measures, so and they think that they, there isn't any need for getting a vaccine, so I managed to, to be protected with these measures, so and the vaccine is associated with so many risks. So it's better to avoid this risk and just to, to keep doing the things that they have been doing for, for almost a year. So I understand. I'm, for instance, in that situation, I've been going through the, the pandemic and I'm very grateful because so far, with all the measures that I've uh, taken in terms of distancing, mask use, I managed to stay away. But if I've been able to dodge a bullet a first time, it doesn't mean I'm going to be able to dodge it a second time. So as soon as I became eligible to receive the vaccine, I took the one that was offered to me because we need to combine all the measures at our disposal, the prevention measures, whether based on mask or distancing or whether based on the vaccine, to make sure we put all the chances on our side to protect ourselves, to protect others, and put an end to the acute phase of this pandemic. Some people, they think if they have strong natural immunity, so they'll be able to protect themselves from COVID-19 and they will not need even to, they will not need the vaccines and they will not need to adhere to these, uh, to these measures. I understand exactly what you're saying. I happen to do sports, so I hang out with the people who are runners, who are cyclists, and they also are healthy and they say, why should I take the vaccine? Why should I do all these prevention measures, because if I get sick, I'm just going to get a bit of fever, I'll be fine. So my message is that we need to understand what 1% means. For every 100 cases, we have one death. So a lot of people will understand 99% of people survive, and I'm probably going to be part of the 99%. But the 1% who die out of all the cases of COVID we've had in the world that means now close to 4 million deaths, and that is absolutely unacceptable. And we see death in young people, we see death in healthy people, we see death in people who do sport. So really, to protect ourselves and also to protect our healthcare system, we need to be together in this. Protect ourselves with all the measures like mask and distancing, with all the vaccine if it's offered to us. Thank you, Dr. Ivan. Thank you everyone for being with us today. Till next time, stay safe and stay healthy.